Hey, what is up and welcome back everyone to my channel and the channel name is Rock and Flow Jacks. I am here about Flow Lab and today we'll be using the save behavior. I'll be talking about it, about the save behavior, uh, everything you need to know to personally operate it and let's start off right now. So first thing, I've created an object that is movable. Uh, you can create your own object. I've made this face. Um, I've made it movable and affected by gravity, so it is movable. Now, I did not add any bundles, so let's go quickly add that. Now, here we have the run and jump bundle. We can uh, move both of these. Now, for now, let's just get rid of this player right here. And by the way, you can find this game in the link description, and you'll find it in... Uh, I'll make a label here, labeled under save. But... For now, let's start off by quickly using the save. So you'll find the save in the game flow. Click on game flow and here's the save. Now, save number. We have the save block. What is the save block consisted of? It's consisted of the save and the read and then the done. How do you use this? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory uh, if you know how to use it, but if you don't, it's not. So first of all, you need a save. You need something that will consistently save Okay, you need something that will read it. So normally, what will be connected to the read is um, like an always, a once, a mailbox, a collision in the triggers. Something that will read it. It might be a mailbox, a message from another player. It might be a collision, uh, when you collide, whatever it might be. That's what the normal read is. It uses triggers. Okay, now the save. The save is actually... Something else, it will probably, if it's a saved number, well, it will probably have either like a number hooked up to it, or it will have uh, maybe an extractor hooked up to it. So it might be a whole variety of things that will save, but it's norm normally it's a number and normally it is the extractor. Uh, this is what I use. Now, what you will do is you'll also or what you will have is you also have a name so you'll simply write a name let's just for this example we're going to be using an example and it's going to be like x okay so you'll just give it a name or x or it, it might be player or it might be mm, beast or it might be you know something else it's just a name but make sure that your name is constantly consistent throughout so if your player if the save number for your first one is going to be player Make sure that the second save one you have, let's go back to game flow. <clears throat> make sure that the second one you have is the same exact name because you don't want to have different names. If you have this with a lowercase p and this with a capital P, no, it will not work. You need to have everything to be exactly the same. And something that you might use is you might select it all and you might control C. You might you might just copy it and then go into your other one, delete this and uh, control V <clears throat> so that your name is exactly the same. Okay, what else we have? We have the type. We have a number. So it might be the save. See, it says save number. It might actually be save text or it might actually be save number list or it might actually be save text list. So it all depends on what you want to use. And normally it will be save number. Okay. And once it's done, it will output somewhere or it might not even have to output. You, you might not even need this. All you need is this. So for you to understand how the save behavior works, I'll give you an example. And for this example, what I'll use is let's just start by dragging and dropping this. We'll use the timer. We'll use the always. We'll use a switch in the logic and math, which is located over here. We'll use in the text, in the properties, we'll use two extractors to show you exactly how this works. You don't even need two extractors, okay? But just stick with me for now. And you'll need to use another save. So you'll need to use two saves, okay? What you'll need also is you'll need another thing that will read it. You'll need once, once, and then you'll need two more saves that you'll plop right over here. And you'll also need two filters, which is located in the logic and math. And last but not least, in the properties, you'll need a position. So with that being said, and this, I will have this example in a totally another video if you need that, but we'll be using this as 
our example. <clears throat> so what you need to do is you need a timer two. This is just follow along. On, always in, extract this x, extract this y, y. And then uh, this will be to save, and this will be to save. Remember, as I said before, that this is exactly what we'll have. This something will always have to save, and then you can read it. Okay, so in this case, the extractor is saving itself, itself to the number. And we'll give the player name X because this X and we'll just do X and then this Y and we'll give this a Y name. So these save numbers will have different names. Now here we need to give this X. So the same ex is exact the name. Sorry for stammering. The name is exactly the same to this name. OK, and then in the save number, we'll need Y. So save number Y, Y, X, X. Now you'll need to connect this to read. Remember, we always need a trigger to read this, no matter what type of, yeah, just connect this like this. And then done, in, done, in. Now set this to equal to zero and set this to equal to zero, okay? Now connect fail to X and fail to Y. Now once you're done with this, this is how it should look. Make sure that your save numbers are always the same name. Make sure that you have a save. See, we have a save here, a save here, and when, then we have a read here and a read here. So let's see how it works now. It should work. So for example, if we're going over here and we're playing along with it, oh, sadly it has no camera, so let's just quickly give this a camera. Um, what do we need? So just go to the properties and drop in a camera. Where is the camera? No, it, it's actually in the components. You'll need a camera. And do right, we can do it to like here. So we're playing, right? We're playing, everything's cool. But what if we just want to press escape? We press escape. Well, the player seems to be back there. But if we press play again, look, it's ended up over here. It's ended up in the place <clears throat> where we, well, left it, last left it off. So see, this is exactly where it was. Now, now we're done. So let's just quickly go over this save behavior. In the save behavior, you'll also always have a save. You also always need something to save and you always need something to read it. And then you also need something done. So for example, in here we have save. So the extractor saves into the save number. And then we have a save number that gets read by this once. So just follow this example. Um, if you have questions, you can always reach out people on Flow Lab forums. And I'll guys see you in my next one.